Godonomics actually comes from a passage in Proverbs that says, Godonomics is this. It says, as a businesswoman, I won't go into the whole scripture here, but it says it starts with producing. From producing, you profit. And in a free market system, profiting means you have to have a quality and a price that people want to buy. You can't exploit somebody if they're choosing to buy your product. From that profiting, you're able to save. And from the savings, you're able actually to give, invest, and to spend on things. Well, most of us start with uh, Keynesian economics, which is utterly opposite of biblical economics. It starts with consuming, but I don't have any money, so I borrow. Then I either enslave myself to credit card debt, or for us, we, as a nation, we enslave ourselves to China and Japan. I inflate the currency, which has stolen 97% of the buying power of the dollar since 1913, or I tax the producer, and we wonder why when we tax the companies who might be providing jobs to actually help with the recovery, why there's no recovery. The more regulation you put on the actual producers, the harder it is to provide jobs to those of us who need it. The Bible supports free market capitalism. It's just been distorted, and nobody teaches on it. It took me a year and a half to research this for a series at our church because there was so little written on it. Usually you get this idea, you go to church, and make you feel guilty, you better give some money, give, 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 give. It's all, you feel like, well, some televangelist trying to take my money. You don't hear the value of work ethic, liberty, and it's all through the Bible. In fact, even the Liberty Bell has inscribed on it a verse from Leviticus that says, Proclaim liberty to all the inhabitants of the land. The idea of liberty is really sewn into the fabric of America, whether you're religious or not.